Seminole fans, it's one of those moments you wait for all off season long. The 2016 football schedule is upon us. I'm here with senior writer for Seminoles.com, Tim Linnefelt. Tim, the fans have seen it, you've seen it. What are some of your first impressions of that schedule? First and foremost, I think it's a really exciting schedule. Compelling games all throughout the slate. Uh, September, October, November, there's a game to look forward to. I think it's really about as challenging and maybe difficult a schedule as you could have assembled from those 12 games. Only one home game in the month of September. Back-to-back -back games against North Carolina and Miami. Uh, a a Friday night game, a rare Friday night home game against Boston College will be a quick turnaround and then of course the uh, the season ender against the Florida Gators. It should be a lot of fun. I do think that Florida State's going to be tested but uh, there's, a, there's a lot to look forward to if you're a Florida State fan. Absolutely. Let's break it down a little bit closer starting with that first stretch of games. It is a tough, tough September for the Seminoles. Ole Miss and Orlando to start then you come home for an easy one Charleston Southern and then it gets a little trickier. You have some road games in there and Seminoles aren't going to see Tallahassee a whole lot early in the season. No, they're really not. And you look at one of the marquee road games of the season comes early on at Louisville. I think that's going to be a tough game. Obviously, we all remember what happened there in Florida State's first trip to Louisville in 2014 with the, the big comeback there. Louisville's got a, a rising star in quarterback Lamar Jackson. He had a huge performance against Texas A&M in the Music City Bowl. I think they're going to be improved than they were from where they were this year. It wouldn't surprise me at all if that ends up being a night game and a pretty tough one. And then you follow that up with a trip to USF, who they were a much different team by the end of the 2015 season than what we saw early on. Really seemed like their program on the, on the rise could contend for the American Championship in their conference. And that's going to be a difficult game on the road. And then a couple of Coastal Division foes coming up after that. You get UNC at home, a team who won the Coastal last year, gave Clemson all they could handle yeah. in that ACC championship game. And of course, traveling down to Miami, always a game to look forward to, always one that the fans really get up for. Yeah, and it'll be exciting to see North Carolina here. Florida State hasn't played North Carolina in the regular season since 2010, which was Jimbo Fisher's first year here at Florida State. And then Carolina's going to have to replace him by his most notably their quarterback in Marquise Williams, but that should be a fun game against the Coastal division opponent that you don't get to see too often and then of course the trip to Miami will be Florida State's first game against their longtime former assistant Mark Richt who's now the head coach down there there should be plenty of storylines coming into that one should be a lot of fun not a lot of breaks in the schedule but the Seminoles do get one they get that critical bye week before maybe the biggest game of the season for the ACC once again as the defending runner-ups in the national championship the Clemson Tigers come to Tallahassee to take on the Seminoles yeah and I think having that bye week is huge and for as challenging as some of the other parts of the schedule are uh, especially you know, the back to back again with Miami and UNC the the three road games I guess you count the neutral side game three games away from home in September I think you, you take that trade off if it means having a bye week before Clemson comes to town give you an extra week to prepare I think that's a really really big deal for Florida State uh, and so you have to be really pleased with that you have to play Clemson but if you can play them at home and play them coming off of a bye week I think that's about as good as you could ask for and then, of course, you can't take lightly NC State, especially when the Seminoles have to travel up to Raleigh. But the, the unique part of this last part of the schedule is that Friday night yeah. game at home. Seminoles have been clamoring for one of those Thursday night, Friday night games at home. They finally got one with BC coming in. Yeah, I think that's a, a really exciting thing. And, and first and foremost, the thing to note is that game is actually scheduled for November 11th, which is a, it is a Friday. It's also Veterans Day, so a lot of folks hopefully will have the day off or be able to get the day off. So if you're concerned about getting out of work or getting out of school maybe those concerns are alleviated just a little bit and it should be a pretty fun atmosphere I know that's also a uh, military appreciation day uh, for that for that Boston College game which is certainly appropriate for Veterans Day so should be a pretty fun atmosphere in Tallahassee that day and, and around Doak Campbell Stadium and you finish up the schedule of course you go to Syracuse thank goodness that game's in a dome being traveling up there in November and then you know just your run-of-the-mill regular you know Florida game to end the season. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It'll be Jim McElwain's first trip to uh, to Florida State, and and you know every game in the Florida State Florida rivalry is significant. But again, it, it's a, it's a big deal for Florida. I think just the way last year's was. You, you can you can stomach losing to your rival, I think, in the first year under a new head coach. They were still getting things going. But for Florida, they, they need to beat Florida State. If, if you lose, you're talking about three straight losses to FSU and then six of the first seven uh, in the Jimbo Fisher era. It's a really big game, I think, for the overall state of the rivalry. Florida State, of course, uh, would be more than happy to win six out of seven against Florida and, and to assert their dominance, continue their dominance over their in-state rivals. But there should be a lot on the line for that one as well. And, of course, there will be plenty of storylines and developments over the course of the season, but here in January, we can already look at that game and say there's perhaps some big, big picture significance already attached to it. And with the signing day still coming up, spring football and everything still coming up, it's fun to, to prognosticate. But you think about this schedule, it sets up for if Florida State 
plays to the level that, that fans want, want to see them play this year, and of course players and coaches, there there's an opportunity to find this team ranked very highly. Absolutely. Well, it starts, you're going to have to win games. But you look at that schedule, there's a, a potential to face several ranked teams uh, on that slate. Well, of course, Ole Miss, USF could be ranked by the time you play them the way they finish the season. Louisville could be ranked. Clemson, of course. NC State, potentially. Florida. Uh, you know, you have potential for maybe five, six ranked opponents, which gives you uh, certainly a, a lot of potential resume builders so that when it comes playoff time and it comes time for the committee to make that selection, if, if Florida State has done what it needs to do with its schedule, there, there shouldn't be too many questions about whether or not they deserve to be in the playoff mix. There you have it, Seminole fans. Of course, season tickets are on sale now. There's some great games out there for you to come and support your Nulls. So get on Seminoles.com, buy your season tickets now, and of course, we'll have everything you need during the season. We have signing day coming yep. up very soon. Spring practice will begin, and everything you need will be on Seminoles.com. Senior writer Tim Linnefelt will have some great articles and content for you all year, and of course, we'll have your video stuff as well. So for Tim Linnefelt, I'm Lane Hurt. Go Nulls.